Hi, and welcome to Operation Save Digby Part 3. We need to do some engine tests today. So we went ahead and we put our battery tray back in there and got it securely fastened. We also brought out another one of the 123s we have at the shop. And we're going to run some side-by-side -side engine comparison tests so you guys can hear the differences between the two engines. The first test we're going to run is a cold start comparison between the engines. Both of the cars have been sitting for about three days over the weekend. So we're going to do that first. And then after that, we're going to get both engines running up to idle. So you can hear the differences in the two engines when they're idling. Once we're done with those tests, we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at Digby and kind of dig into more of its problems. The first car here we're going to start is a 1980 300D non-turbo. My dad's had this car for a few years and it's just got a really nice engine. So we're going to go ahead and jump in, give this thing a crank over, and I'll let you guys hear that. Now remember, not only did we not pre-glow, we didn't even touch the throttle. And you could see and listen to how quickly that engine got up to idle on all five cylinders. Now it's time to go try Digby. All right, let's give Digby a start. As you can hear, Digby's still running really rough. Now I know a lot of you talked about how the fact that, well, it's just a rough sounding diesel engine. You can drive it on that. And yes, I could, but one issue we're encountering is Digby is smoking a lot. Now that's just not very nice for the person that's driving behind you. So we're going to take a closer look at the EGR valve and some of the soot and carbon buildup that it's been encountering. Now some of you might be thinking that based on the color of the smoke that maybe Digby's problems relate to a blown head gasket or maybe a cracked cylinder head. Now over the last couple of weeks we have been driving Digby quite a lot and we have seen no signs of overheating in the engine and no signs of coolant loss. So it's starting to rain, we're going to get Digby in the shop and go ahead and take a look at that EGR valve. Now, my air filter housing, it's already broken, the mounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this out to give me easier access to the EGR valve. Now that's not something that you have to do, but it's something I'm gonna do now because it's another problem I gotta address when I get down in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out and get a closer look. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the breather hose from the air filter housing. Next, we'll unclamp the lid to the air filter housing and unscrew the wing nut in the center. We will remove the lid and take out the air filter inside. Remove the hose by scrunching it down and pulling it out. And then underneath, there will be a flat head screw attached to a clamp that you'll unscrew to loosen the lower clamp. Now since my filter housing brackets are broken, it's just going to come right out and I don't have to address the bracket bolts that hold the housing in place. 
Next, we're gonna take our six millimeter Allen tool. And we're gonna loosen up the two Allens holding the EGR into place. And when removing this clamp, after you get the bolt off, you're gonna to have to pry it apart to get it to come off the EGR. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of soot inside the EGR valve. All right, we got our EGR valve out. I'm gonna go take it over to my dad and we're gonna take a closer look on the EGR valve and why it's important to the 123 Mercedes. Okay, dad, we are here. And we're gonna look at the EGR valve. What do you wanna, what well, do you wanna talk Well, the first, about first thing I wanna talk about is the soot problem in the intake manifold. You know, when does it become too much? Well, if it gets so plugged up in there, it's restricting the amount of air getting into the combustion chamber and it, it affects the fuel burn. You're, you know, you're not getting the right amount of air and fuel mixture, so it's not going to burn properly. That could create the smoke. But from what we saw, that's not enough soot to really create a huge problem. It might add to the problem, but, you know, I'm looking at the manifold, and I'm thinking, you know, sure, we could spend a lot of time cleaning out, and, but I don't want to do that right now. I want to focus on a couple other things and not spend a lot of time on things that... Uh, Maybe a waste of time if we decide Digby's engine is not worth saving. So what I want to talk about now is the theory of operation. Because if I tell you the theory of operation behind the EGR system, then you're going to be able to troubleshoot it better in the future. Okay, so why is there all that soot in the intake manifold? Well, let's talk about the EGR valve. You notice the one that we pulled off Digby had quite a bit of soot in it. And the problem is, if this has a lot of soot in it and is not closing the valve, that can create a problem. The valve is operated by vacuum. Vacuum comes in here, and when the engine gets to a certain point, the vacuum controls open the valve and close the valve. So if it's not opening and closing at the right time, you could be getting excess exhaust gases into the intake manifold. So what does EGR mean? It means exhaust, gas, recirculation. So let's take a look at the manifolds and I'll show you how this works. So this is the intake manifold right there. EGR sits up here. So what happens is when all these exhaust gases are exiting the exhaust system right here and the EGR valve opens, it will allow extra exhaust gases to go back into the intake manifold and reburn. That's why recirculation. It means taking some of the unburnt exhaust gases and routing them back into the intake manifold to be burned again and then come out the exhaust again. So it's just around and around well, we go around like that. So if the EGR valve is stuck open, guess what? Yeah. All the time you get all that exhaust gas recirculating through the intake and that will create excessive soot. So you need to make sure this isn't stuck open. You also need to make sure that it's operating properly. Now I'm gonna show you Digby's. We're gonna put a vacuum hand pump tester on it. And we're gonna see if this one is operating properly. Okay, I'm gonna show you as I pump up. Watch the gauge closely and also watch this valve in here. See if you can see it opening. Now see, I'm pumping it up and I can't even get it over 10 and the valve's just barely moving. So we have a problem with the valve not opening at all, which is not as bad as the valve being stuck open. Now a normal EGR valve, I've got another one here that will show. You know, still this has some soot in it, but it's not as bad as Digby's. Now watch again as I apply vacuum to this EGR valve. See that? Look at See, the, see how far the valve opens up? So when it's fully open, it's allowing full recirculation of whatever exhaust gases make their way up through this pipe and into the intake manifold. So what we're gonna do now, Joel, is we're just going to take this better EGR and put on Digby. 
and we will leave it unplugged. Okay. For the remainder of Digby's engine tests, we will leave the EGR unplugged because we don't want to take time to do all the troubleshooting on the vacuum controls that open and close it because that could be a problem as well. So we're just going to put this back on, leave it unplugged, and continue on with our tests. The next step, the next thing we're going to check is the pre-chamber. And we're going to get that pre-chamber out on number three and we're going to thoroughly inspect it. And that will allow us to look into the cylinder to see if we've got excessive scoring. Okay. Well, it sounds like we have our next task. <laughs> we sure do. Uh, we'll talk about theory first and then I'm going to let you do the work.